Welcome to Macau for the first of two legs of the final races of the year for the TCR World Tour event of Macau. And in particular, it is the Macau gear race. The cars are working their way through the pit lane and doing some exploratory laps and warm up laps before the race gets underway. They have four minutes and 20 seconds in which to do it. It's a lovely day here at Macau, 21 degrees. It's sunny. There are no clouds in the sky. You get that beautiful look of the skyline here at Macau on a race the like of which there is no other on the planet. It is the week of the 70th Grand Prix for the Macau Grand Prix and two races for the Macau Gear Race. This one, this first leg about to get underway, around nine laps of the gear circuit here at Macau. And we are on board with the man that has won more touring car races than any other. Rob Huff makes his way around the gear circuit and David Anderson in the commentary box alongside me. Rob Huff has something to prove today after yesterday qualified in fourth place. And he was held up in that qualifying session by Mikhail Ashkener, who got a grid drop as a consequence of all of that. But in so doing, with the points awarded uh, for qualifying, so Rob Huff ended up losing the championship lead and uh, it means that now Norbert Mikulish who came here third a point back on Rob and Jan Elache they were tied on points Norbert Mikulish was third one point back he now is the championship leader it means he's six ahead of Elache and ten ahead of Huffy and Rob was Huff by name and nature after qualifying because he was decidedly <laughs> grumpy when he was uh, approached by the championship officials uh, or they did later apologize but he it shows how emotions run high uh, and uh, having been impeded he was very very unhappy about it and uh, the net result of all of that as I say was the grid drop for Ashkener but it doesn't really change life for Rob Huff in terms of the points that he was able to score in the qualifying session so here is your new championship leader Norbert Mikulic. Not only that but also pole position sitter for this first leg of the weekend threading his way around the circuit he's got a, a good pedigree here at Macau as well as Norbert makes his way around the tight and twisty section even find space to weave the car at every possible opportunity to get a bit of heat into those tyres on what is a very very sunny day here at Macau it's a beautiful day the grandstands are packed of course they are and everyone is catered for if you like your touring cars if you like your GT cars if you like your single seaters or your motorcycles we've got something for you and a real feast of touring car action today. We've already had the Chinese Touring Car Championship for working for the Macau Touring Car Cup. And now leg one for the Macau Gear Race. That gets underway tomorrow at 10.35 this morning, uh, tomorrow morning. And we're about to get a few words from pit lane ahead of this race. And Paul Jeffries is down there in the pit lane. Let's get down in the sunshine to Paul Hello, at Macau. everybody, and welcome to the pit lane down here at Macau. And let me tell you, the atmosphere is electric down here. Ahead of the first race of the weekend, just pulled up on the grid, is Jan Elishé. Jan, if we could have a quick word with you. First race of the weekend, how are you feeling? How's the car? How's your prospects? Oh, car, is, uh, car is good, mate. Uh, I feel all right, you know. Uh, I'm working every day, uh, every day of my life uh, to be in this position, so no reason to put uh, any extra pressure. Just uh, enjoying the, the fight for the championship, you know, in Macau. It's, it's, uh, it just feels amazing. I remember when I, I, was, uh, I was a kid watching Ivan uh, fighting for the title here, and uh, now it's just, just pure, pure, uh, pure fun. And you said that the qualifying lap was one of the laps of your life. Just how exciting is it to drive on this circuit? Ah, you know, it's like uh, when you do like a racetrack like here in uh, in Macau, when you push the limit, you, I touched the wall three times, I had 40 kilo in the car, so I knew that it was all or nothing, so I had to, to give everything, so for sure it's like an amazing feeling to, to put a lap like this on the edge in Macau. Fantastic, Jan, have a very good race, thank you for your time. Jan Elche, of course, for Cyan Racing, Lincoln Co., one of the three drivers that head into this weekend as a championship contender. Bebu Girolami that we can see here in the Honda, he's not in his car at the moment, so we will come back to Bebu. One man I do want to speak to is Rob Huff. So let's see if we can have a quick word with the self-styled king of Macau. Mr. Rob Huff, can we have a quick word? 
How are you feeling ahead of this race? A little bit hot. It's very warm down here. I think, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's uh, almost a perfect finale. You know, top, top three in the championship on the top four of the grid. Makes for an interesting, spicy finish, doesn't it? It really does. And you are somewhat of a master around here. What's the strategy going into this start? I mean, ultimately, uh, uh, Norby and Jan obviously qualified ahead of us. They stole some points from us, so uh, we need to try and work on getting them back. But ultimately, the, the big hunt is tomorrow's race. You know, we need to get through today with some good points, try and stay as close as, as possible or close the gap as much as possible. And then, uh, and then yeah, that sets us up for one hell of a final. Fantastic, Rob. Very best of luck. We'll look forward to watching the charge. So, of course, Rob Huff for come to you racing in the Audi. Had a great season, won a number of races already this season. And as somewhat of a master at Macau. It'll be interesting to see if he can move forward. We've seen Mikel Athcona in the car here at the minute. Mikel started in fourth. Let me see if I can try and slide my way in here and have a quick word with Mikel. Mikel, okay for a quick word? Okay. How are you feeling ahead of the race? Yeah, it's really good to be honest. After very good qualifying yesterday, being the uh, the fastest man, if you take the ideal lap time, uh, you always feel with a very full confidence going ahead into the first race. It's a shame that we dropped three positions by this penalty yesterday, but uh, you know now we focus on race one, so we're gonna give uh, everything to to try to go in the first position. And obviously, you know, Norby is alone. I will try to help him. Mikel, appreciate it. Have a good race. Thank you very much. Almost got crushed by Hyundai there, so that's one to tap on to my list of things I've achieved. As you can see, the grid's really filling up now. The crowds are very expectant of what should be an interesting race. It's the first of two this weekend. Ten points separate our three drivers, led by Norbert Mikulic for the Hyundai BRCN Squadra Corsa team. Six points in arrears, Jan Elishé, and then ten points for Rob Huff. It's going to be a great race. So I think now it feels like a good time to head back to our commentary teams before we get on the track and go racing. So the grid formed and uh, very shortly the installation that will be underway then. It is a busy grid and uh, tomorrow set to be even busier here at Macau. And with temperatures rising, we are just about one o'clock local time now. So uh, understandably, when Rob Huff said it's pretty hot down here, he's, of course, in his overalls and his helmet and hands device. He's about to get into a hot car as well. Uh, and uh, then for nine laps, the gear race. It doesn't sound like a lot, only a nine lap race, but it's still a lot of kilometers to cover around here. Oh, and an awful lot can happen in it. It's enough. It's enough because these races always give us some uh, tremendous excitement. That's for sure. Absolutely sure. And uh, good to hear from the drivers down on the grid. Good to hear from Rob Huff because uh, wherever you are in the world, you'll be tuning in to find out whether your favourite driver is going to command the gear circuit here at Macau. Confirmation of the driver standings in the TCR World Tour event. Mikulitz, Norby Mikulitz with 398 points from Jan Elache with 392 points and Rob Huff there in 388. Rob making the point that the top three in the championship are covered in the top four on the grid. So this is going to be quite some battle, isn't it? I know Rob's family are tuned in. His mum and dad, Peter and Kate, they'll be tuned in. So too his sister, Francesca, and uh, nerves are jangling ahead of this penultimate race of the World Tour event. They're used to this. They remember doing this in 2012, uh, cheering on their boy, their lad, who claimed the World Touring Car Championship title here at Macau. He is an expert here. He was, uh, and characteristically, a uh, little bit grumpy at the end of qualifying yesterday. And after the uh, investigation by the stewards, with good reason being held up yep. right at the end, yep. because uh, uh, we uh, noted at the start of that lap that he had engaged full huff mode around uh, the gear circuit that was never allowed the chance to shine. Uh, we did know that something was amiss when he came down the pit lane because he was uh, clearly on the radio to Paul Ridgway, his engineer. The, there was lots of hand gesturing as he was talking through the lap and was, yeah, uh, pretty unhappy he about it. He was gesticulating in the car. But fourth is where he starts, and if anybody can make progress from there, it is Rob Huff. So uh, expect a demon start. Of course, what doesn't help is that the championship leader, his main rival now, Norbert Mikulic, will start on pole position. 
And also going against Huffy is that he hasn't really got much help from uh, teammates around him. He's a bit of a, a lone furrow plower there because the next of the Audis is Fred Verbeesh and he will start way back seventh. And then it's John Filippi and he's going to start eighth on the grid. So Rob has to do it himself, whereas Norbert Mikulish does have at least one Hyundai up there. That said, Jan Elache, who was also in the title fight, well clear of his teammates because uh, Ma Xing Hua is sixth, Ted Bjork is uh, ninth, and Santiago Urrutia will be tenth on the grid. So, uh, not, really, none of them can, can perhaps rely too much on their teammates because they're all ahead of them. Yeah, they are. It might be interesting to watch uh, what sort of start Fred Fabish uh, gets, actually, from the fourth row of the grid, the inside of the fourth row of the grid, with uh, Mikkel Ashkona just directly in front in the Hyundai. So you said uh, quite rightly that uh, Rob's teammates are a row back. However, there is something that Fred Fabish could do off the line, is there not? And something that John Felipe could be involved in as well. We need to get a really good start. And uh, good to see that Rob is in good spirits ahead of this race, away from the camera. Marcin Poirot, of course, is another driver that has uh, a huge amount of support around the world and uh, a huge amount of success uh, here at Macau and in uh, touring cars around the world as well. Qualified in sixth place and a uh, chance for uh, a couple of last words with the team before we get this race underway. Qualified in sixth place, Marcin Poirot. Fred Ravish, that is the teammate of Rob Huff. They were going around the Macau Grand Prix Museum together a couple of days ago. They uh, had a little tour guide to take them around. I'm sure Rob just wanted to go to his waxwork, didn't he? <laughs> he is the, the only driver on the grid uh, to have his own waxwork, and with good reason as well. Huffy has had such success here. Yeah, last year he wasn't in the gear race, was he? He was in the Macau Touring Car Cup, but yeah. he won one of those races anyway, uh, and uh, was absolutely electric in the MG. So here in the car that he's been driving all season, at a circuit he knows, a circuit he loves, but a circuit he respects. He uh, appreciates where it can bite, so uh, he will be doing this the intelligent way. Ted Bjork, good to have the former sports car racer as part of that Link and Co squad, but he is lining up. Uh, ninth, the Lincoln Co's all with 40 kilos uh, of weight. The Lincoln Co's of Jan Elache, Santiago Arutia, and Ted Bjork. So those 40 kilos for uh, Elache, particularly significant in terms of him trying to fend off Rob Huff, whose car should be that little bit lighter and maybe have a slight advantage at certain parts of the circuit. Grid now starting to be cleared as we will have the green flag in just under two minutes' time. And so, yeah, all of the, uh, the glitz and glamour that uh, precedes races here at Macau cleared off the grid, including, I think, a very large, was it a chicken? Was it a pheasant? Sorry, what? The large cuddly bird that made it onto the grid. Uh, I didn't see a large cuddly bird. Did you've, you been, you've been at the metal polish again, <laughs> Hyde. <laughs> you're, you're talking out loud again. I did, yeah. Yes. Had tails and everything. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's get on with the race, shall Fine. we? Fine. What a good idea. <laughs> so it is going to be Hyundai and uh, Lincoln Co. at the front of the grid. Uh, Honda and Audi on the second row. The Honda being that of Nestor Girolami. That is Ben Barguana, son of Jason Barguana, who's been a great character all weekend. And Ben did a really good job to get himself uh, into the top 12 shootout. In the end, he has ended up 11, so he's going to miss out on the reverse grid. Uh, but it's been quite a turnaround for the weekend for, for the Australian because the Claret built Teddy Claret's team, Peugeot, stopped in free practice with uh, rising water temperatures. And yet he was the last man across the line in Q1 and did enough to get himself into Q2 and in so doing uh, bumped uh, one or two of the uh, other fancied drivers out of the equation, but it was a really, really good effort to do so. You see the grid scroll through. Norbert Mikulish at the front uh, with Jan Erlache for company, ahead of Nestor Girolami and Rob Huff on the second row. The third row, Mikhail Ashkina and Mark Xinghua. Then it's Fred Vervish ahead of John Filippi, Ted Bjork, and to round out the top ten, Santiago Urrutia. Ben Baguana is on the sixth row with Lo Seho, one of the uh, local drivers that qualified through TCR Asia last week. He in turn is ahead of Yan Chang and Paul Poon. He's got a good track record here, as Alan will explain in a moment. Next up is uh, Tian Kai and Deng Ba Wei with Marco Butti to round out the grid. Yeah, Paul Poon, 
multiple uh, saloon car touring car winner here at Macau from the various categories that we have racing. Green flag is waved and the cars get off on their final warming up lap. This is going to be critical as much heat into the tyres and yeah, Rob Huff straight away off the line, weaving the car and uh, that means that every little weave from side to side absolutely critical for the start of this race. Making up places, so too for the pole sitter. Norby Michelitz leaves the car. He's got success in his history here at Macau. And so too was Jan Evashe. All of them know this circuit. All of them know this circuit can bite. And having a conversation with Rob Huff just a few nights ago on Tuesday evening, he was saying that even he, with all the success, he breathes in at Mandarin Corner. And it's always a, a bit of nerves as you go around that very, very fast corner on the run down to the overtaking, the overtaking position on the circuit, the favoured and preferred overtaking point down at this bar. That said, if you're in a touring car, you can squeeze through on the tight and twisty part of the circuit, see Rob do that, and I can't bear to look, to be perfectly honest, he does, barely blinks when he's at the wheel of the car around this track. Well, the man behind the motorsport coffee brand hopefully got about a double shot because that's going to stand him in good stead then for the next nine laps as he generates the warmth in the Kumho rubber ready to get round to the grid this is how we now uh, stand in the championship then so Norbert Mikulish six up on Jan Elache and Tana on Rob Huff but it could all shuffle again come the end of the next nine laps one or two slightly nervous faces peer on there look from the uh, Hyundai pit box as they wait for Mikhail Ashkina and uh, Robert Michelich to slot back into place on the grid. The BRC Hyundai M Squadra Corsa, the Hyundai Elantras these days. Hyundai's got through quite a lot of its model range in TCR rule set, uh, taking on the Audi RS3 of uh, Rob Huff and, of course, the Lincoln Co. The, uh, of Jan Elache. The Cyan Racing Lincoln Co. 03 FL TCR to give it its full title. Uh, to come to you, the team that's been operating Audis both in touring cars and GTs this year, they look on and will be very expectant indeed for Rob Huff's first lap. And it's going to be spectacular, to say the least. It most certainly will, and we've got uh, quite a few significant on-board shots as well. Not least on board with the King of Macau, Rob Huff, weaving the car to get as much heat into the tyres before the start of the race as he possibly can. As indeed the rest of the four do swinging their way around Donna Maria long left hander downhill to the Melco hairpin, single file through the hairpin. Road cars get bigger and bigger as the years go on. And so too, therefore, to touring cars, and that makes it even more tricky negotiating the Melco hairpin. No overtaking throughout. It's always good that shot, the driver working at the pedals as well. You see just yeah. how smooth the application of the uh, of the pedals, either one of them. So this, the wide part of the circuit, this section that brings you from Fisherman's Bend round to uh, Lisboa, and then boy does it narrow after that. But to the grid comes the championship leader, Norbert Mikulic, and as he slots into place then in the Hyundai Elantra, it's the one by one staggered grid formation. So he's got that car's length advantage over the uh, opposition for when we do go racing. Everybody else slots into place around him. But Mikulish, who has been the World Touring Car Cup champion back in 2019, see it Leon Euro Cup champion a decade before that, is the man on pole position. This is race one of two in the Kumho TCR World Tour event of Macau. It's the first race that constitutes the gear race at the Macau Grand Prix. Certainly does, and the nerves continue to rise, not just on the grid, but around the world for all the support that these drivers will get for the first leg of the Macau gear race this weekend. The the final meeting of the year for the Kumo TCR World Tour event here at Macau. Green flag at the back. The engine notes rise. We're about to get the lights on. Five lights on. They go off and we get the race underway. Who gets the best start? Rob Huff gets a good start. Quickly off the line. Slots in behind. He's going to set himself up to be very, very close to Gear Army as they go down towards, well, turn one. They get through turn one. Does everyone get through okay? They do. 
Dreadful start by Air Lache, though. That car staggered off the line. And so one of the three in the hunt for the championship has gone backwards in a big, big hurry. So Rob half one up in the third place. He's on the tail of Girolami as they come down to Lisboa. And it is Norbert Mikulish in the lead as he tries to go defensive. Huff goes to the outside line. Look at the blue Audi. Can he get the undercut coming out of the corner? Let's see. Mikulish under big, big pressure from Girolami. They go right at Lisboa. So far, so good. Huff looks on the inside. One or two run wide. Marco Butti just skims against the barrier in the back of the pack then as they climb the hill. That one of nine. I reckon that's probably the best you could hope for off the line for Rob Huff. Up into third place, he's in a podium position and carrying good pace as well. There was a little wiggle just in front of him. That shows how much pressure there was moving into uh, Lisboa. That's El Lachey trying to get back ahead of John Philippe and salvage something out of his uh, dreadful start. Yan Twang's red Lincoln Clo uh, drops down the hill for the first time, but it's Mikulish from Girolami, and it's not going to be long before Rob Huff is lining up for Honda to get second place. So he's a man in a big, big hurry. He certainly is, and Rob Huff keeping as close as he possibly can, keeping up the, uh, the pressure on Girolami in second place as they thread their way through the tight twists of the top part of the Macau gear circuit. Then the circuit around ultimately one of the pinch points on the top part of the circuit and police then in Samorish it's a very short blast that they can get caught out on either one of these two right-handers and then into the left-hander of Donna Maria tightens up on the exit does Donna Maria if, uh, as a result of that you can see a little bit of a lock up there a bit of a uh, tire smoke um, as they thread their way around Don Maria, then single file into the Melko hairpin. Down from the Melko hairpin. Now we begin to see the power come in, and Rob Huff needs to stay very, very close to the back of Gilles Army. Yellow flag at turn 15 within sector four, and that's the reason why, because uh, Tian Kai has hit the barrier and he's ended up in the middle of the road, and there's just about room for the uh, medical team cars to squeeze by. Hopefully that can be moved out of harm's way as the cars now come down towards the end of lap number one. And here, look, Mikulish is trying to build that gap over Girolami. Huff in third, trying to get close enough to make a run on the way down towards Lisboa, and the move starts now, really. This is where he's got to be really, really brave going through Reservoir, trying to get in the toe. In fourth place over the line is Ashkuna. Fifth is Vavish, sixth is Marshin Kwa, and down to seventh from second on the grid is Yan El Ache. So that's one of those three title fighters who has taken a step back, really, because of that bad start. Girolami doing a good job in the Honda in second place, and Huff not close enough to attack here. No, not close enough, and in turn, he's looking in his mirrors because he's under pressure from Ashkuna directly behind as they go down into the right-hander at Lisboa. So no attack from Huffy, defence for Huffy in third place. They turn now into San Francisco, and they've got this problem, of course, in sector four. Are they going to get that car lifted and the circuit clear by the time the cars come up, uh, up towards that point on the circuit. I fancy probably not. Oh, I was going to say, yes, I reckon they will, because they were doing such a good job. But we will see. Yellow flags are being shown anyway, so keep an eye to it. They are approaching the end of sector uh, two then, as the yellow flags will be shown. Look back from Norbert Mikulich's car. Past the wall, thread your way between the stone and the concrete either side. It's still Girolami second. Rob Huff not close enough on this part of the circuit to make a move. But Norbert Mikulish is doing everything absolutely right, isn't he? Converting pole position into the race lead. Ashkuna fourth, Vavish fifth, Marc Chinqua in sixth place. As dropping downhill comes Mikulish approaching that incident zone. And let's see, we've got green flag once more. So the road should be clear for the leaders to come through. It is, and they make the climb up the hill with Rob Huff then now. Uh, in the first sector, a little bit quicker. In the second, a little bit slower. In the third sector, a little bit slower than Girolami. And the Honda, if anything, looking nearer now to the back of the Hyundai. And just to note as well from race control that after that incident there is a slippery surface down there. You just saw the yellow flag that goes throughout the race weekend. It just means no overtaking at the Melco hairpin and it's single file all the way around the corner. They all concertina up. They get in a train as they head through the corner and just uh, a reminder of exactly how that happened. Horrible, horrible, horrible understeer. Just gets it wrong. I don't think the car touched anything, did it? No, I think... It stalled as, as Tian Kai was so late on the brakes and he just let the revs dip. He was so focused on trying to keep it off anything solid. And the net result of that was, as you saw, that it just expired on the racetrack. Leaders come through then at the end of the lap. 
and it remains Norbert Mikulish ahead that half falling back from Girolami now it was six tenths last time and now as they go through it is nine tenths and Girolami in second spot has just done the fastest lap of the race yeah so Nessa Girolami in second place car one two nine a point seven of a second behind the race leader but with the fastest lap of the race as well he has bought himself a little bit of a cushion between himself and Rob Huff in third place almost a second the advantage to uh, two minutes 30.581 was the fastest lap of the rest. Ashkena had put in the fastest first sector. That's taken away by Fred Mavish, who comes through in fifth place. And that's the um, cushion that maybe Rob Huff was hoping was going to get past uh, Mikhail Ashkena and take the pressure off the back of Rob Huff's car. Uh, that hasn't happened. Uh, it's a uh, 0.7 of an advantage that Rob has over Mikhail Ashkena. And the two of those are having their own little moments in qualifying yesterday. We had the switch, I think, between the Lincoln Co's, haven't we? With Yann Erlache being allowed up past Arshin Kwa. Yes, we have. So that's given a bit more of an advantage to Erlache, but he's really struggling in sixth now, relative to second on the grid, after that really bad start. The car just crawled away. You saw the front of the grid flooding past him. Ashkenau with an absolute best in the sector, so too Verveech. Look back from the leader. It is Norbert Mikulish then on this lap three out of the nine. And Ashkenau getting onto the tail of Rob Half. So, as Alan was suggesting, they had a little drama together in qualifying yesterday. And Ashkenau, another one trying to rebuild his race here. And, of course, were he to get ahead of Half, that would be really good for the team, really good for teammate Norbert Mikulish as he takes points away from the Brit. Jan Alashe in seventh place has just put in the overall best in sector three. So that's a recovery from the rather poor start that uh, Jan Alashe um, had to endure. Dropped all the way down. He's in seventh place. He's put in an overall best. Six, of course. I mean, got past... Shinkwa oh, because he let him by, didn't he? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah on yeah. this lap, he's gained that place. So, he in turn is closing on Verviche now, El Ashes. He's another one trying to rebuild the race. It's fascinating how this is all panning out, isn't it? And with the teammates in this as well to affect things. Yeah, and plenty of teammates there are as yeah. well in the TCR World Tour event. First year that we've had this World Tour. It's taken in some quite splendid circuits around the world and has proved to be very, very successful. World class drivers in touring cars competing against each other. They all know each other. They've been racing against each other for many, many years. Norbert Michelitz comes through and completes uh, what is the fastest lap of the race. Three laps complete. 2.29.768 for the race leader. Just as well, he's got a rear facing camera. That's the only one we need at the moment. This is Jan Erlache then in that sixth place, and he's going after Verviche, who needs to hang on to that place to protect Rob Huff. And Huff, in turn, is still eight tenths back. He was fractionally quicker last time through than was Nestor Girolami. But look behind, because there you can see Ashkena, number 196, right on the back of the Audi. So suddenly Huff has to think about defending rather than attacking, and life becomes very different indeed. Ashkena got the absolute best first sector time on this run down to Lisboa. He's right on the back of Huff as they climb the hill now. Yeah, so under pressure is Rob Huff in third place. Ashkena right there on this tight and twisty section at the very section that we've seen overtaking in world touring cars in previous years world tcr as well you can just squeeze through you have to breathe in you have to uh, uh, be aware that you're not going to have mirrors at the end of it but there is just enough room for two touring cars whether that's going to happen on this lap or not probably not because at the moment i think ashkin is just hoping that rob half uh, uncharacteristically is going to make the slightest of slip-ups on this part of the circuit to offer an opportunity to take third place away. Ashkena with the overall best in sector one right on the tail of Rob Huff. What's rather more worrying in a way is that the Audi doesn't have the pace to stay with Girolami nor get away from Ashkena. Now, OK, Ashkena notionally out-qualified Rob, so we know the Hyundai is quick. He was behind him on the grid because of the drop that he got as the penalty for impeding. But this would predictably give Mikulic a greater advantage in the championship, given that he leads the race, 18 points. So that's going to make it very difficult for anybody to overturn that tomorrow. It's possible, but it's very difficult. So Huff needs a place, he knows it. And of course, were he to lose that place to Ashkuna and lose yet further points to Mikulic, it virtually gives Norby the championship. So Rob has got to keep fighting here. It's, uh, not, it's not really been just the story of this race that the Audi has maybe just been a little bit down on pace compared to those around. 
um, uh, namely the um, Lincoln Coes and uh, also the Hyundais. It's just been a little bit breathless over the course of two days running up to now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's never quite looked as good as the Hyundais, although the RS3 is a relatively old car these days. Uh, still very rapid in normal circumstances, but you wonder whether it's coming to the end of its development and with Audi Sport uh, effectively terminating its customer racing programme at the end of the year, you wonder whether it can go any further. They've got as much out of that car as is now possible. But Rob Huff will compensate for that. Look how quick he is. But Ashkin is even quicker going through Mandarin. Closing, closing, closing down towards Lisboa. Huff goes defensive on the inside. Ashkin faints to the outside line as they hit the brakes. He's alongside on the outside line. This for third place. Ashkin in the Hyundai goes toe to toe with Rob Huff. And Huffy has got sharp elbows. He sticks them out and he hands on a third. That's class driving, though, isn't it? No contact between the two of them on their battle down into Lisboa. It could have oh so easily have gone wrong between the two of them, side by side into the right-hander, but it didn't. They gave each other racing room, and uh, that was a, a very, very entertaining moment, the two of them going side by side, particularly after what happened in qualifying yesterday under investigation for their starting position, Fred Verviche. It may have been that he just crept slightly in advance of the white line for his grid box, but Fred Verviche is fifth on the road at the moment. Mikulish leads Girolami, leads Huff, Ashkener fourth, Verviche ahead of Erlache. Then it is Mark from Buick, from Urutia, and John Philippe, the French driver in the third, Quam to Audi, is there in 10th spot. We are currently on lap number five. We are, and Rob Huff didn't like that going side by side, so he's pulled away a little bit and uh, has got himself a little bit of a, uh, a breathing space behind him, and that means that now he's not having to defend quite so vehemently. He can maybe do something about bringing down the gap between himself and second place with Nesta Giolami in second place. That gap was uh, really extended while Rob was having to defend from Mikel Ascona. Gave us a great moment, didn't it? Side by side into Lisboa. That's one to savour. It's proper touring car races, driving touring cars properly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it was great to see it. I uh, agree. There, off the road, though, and in the wall. 21, that is Paul Poon. There's another car involved, which I fear is Yan Chuang's Lincoln Co. But Paul Poon is up against the wall. So we've got drama at the S's. It was Yan Chuang. He has got going again. And let's hope then that that car can be moved either under its own power or with a little bit of quick assistance. And I think Paul Poon is on its way. Yes, Deng Bao Wei goes through. Uh, Paul Poon, as we were hearing pre-race, has a good track record in some of the uh, support races over the years here. Uh, but he's got going now, and the road, therefore, is clear. We've got five of the nine laps in the book. Mikulish leading by 1.6 seconds, and the gap Girolami to Huff. It's 1.4, so it's still advantage Honda. It certainly is, yeah. Rob Huff doing everything he could on that previous lap. The good news is that he is that much further ahead of Mikel Ascona in uh, fourth place. So now Rob can maybe get his head down a little bit, put in a couple of those huffy laps around Macau and see if he can bring down that gap from 1.4 seconds to second place to a little bit closer to maybe think about uh, putting uh, Giolami under a little bit of pressure around San Francisco. Up the hill they go. And this is where the circuit really does tighten up. A wall on one side, barrier on the other side. Wall on one side, barrier on the other side. And then it swaps around. So there is no room for error here on the tight and twisty section. That's Teddy Yip that they're going into, the left-hander at Teddy Yip, one of the names synonymous with the 70 years of the Macau Grand Prix and celebrated in the Macau Grand Prix Museum, which is a quite superb visit. If you have never been to Macau for the Macau Grand Prix, I urge you to do so. It's uh, a unique motorsport event. It's a festival of motorsport, and they really know what they're doing to put on a street race. These are the streets of Macau. So you're riding with El Ache. He is in sixth spot and edging closer to the back of Fred Verviche then. And every place El Ache gains is to his benefit because it keeps him in the mix for the championship. Ashkener is coming back at half then on this lap number six. Make the climb towards Donna Maria now through that long left and then the short run down towards Malko Herpin. Norbert Mikulish still leading the way. So championship leader is race leader. He took the points for qualifying yesterday. And there, look, really close under braking for the Herpin. Is Ashkener back onto the tail of half? And Bervish and El Ache are not that far behind. The top two escaping. I hesitate to say that Rob Huff is the cork in the bottle, but I fear that before long he's going to have quite a queue of cars behind him. Not a phrase we use often around the streets of Macau, and Rob Huff never um, 
do I remember using that phrase before about Rob? But yeah, uh, unfortunately, that is the way it's rather looking at the moment because they are queuing up behind Ashkena right there behind Fabiche and El Ache right there in turn behind them up towards the conclusion of what is going to be a seven laps in the book. Uh, the conclusion of this lap. Three laps to go at Macau for the first leg of the Macau gear race here for the 70th Macau Grand Prix. So you look back then from Rob Huff's car. We saw a lap ago how brave through Mandarin Mikhail Ashkena was, and he's going to do it again. Huff goes defensive, covers off the inside line. Ashkena once more has only the outside line to try. This time he's alongside, he breaks late, he's got his nose in front. The Audi quivers under braking, they touch. Ashkena gets forced out wide, he just misses the barrier. Huff hangs on to third. But that time there was just a little rub between the two of them. This is getting ever more intense, isn't it? As Rob Huff desperately tries to hang on to a podium place and the points for third. Get a replay of this as well. What a moment it was as the two of them went into Lisboa. Let's have a look. So Ashkena on the outside just wiggles. He's so lucky to have not had to go down the escape road and so lucky to have not glanced the barrier on the exits of Lisboa. What a moment between these two. So late on the brakes, you could see Rob Huff's car quivering as he stood on the anchors. He's foot nearly through the floorboards to try and get the car slowed down and as it did the car had a little hop and a skip and just rubbed up against Ashkin and nothing deliberate about it but that's just how committed the pair of them are that ultra fast part of the circuit down to the heaviest braking zone right so Huff is still third and Ashkin a fourth and of course he served in ten Rob will know what's coming next time through he certainly will yeah we've had two laps now where the two of them have gone side by side on the run down towards uh, Lisboa and uh, it's a mouth-watering prospect that that may well continue for the remainder of this race. A great, great battle. But it's only for third place. And for Rob Huff, that's not going to be good news because Norbert Mikulic continues to lead. In second place, it's still Nestor Gialami. And uh, that gap at the end of the previous lap between second and third, so Gialami back to Huff, was 1.6 seconds. Not close enough. Through Black Sands and then down to Fisherman's Bend. The race leaders come. This is lap seven, so it's going to be two to go this time. And Rob Huff, because of having to defend, has fallen a long way back from Nestor Girolami, who in turn is close, but not close enough to Norbert Mikulic. It's still about a second and a half between those two. Right, so Ashkena's big move at Lisboa, take three. Starts now with a good run out of our bend. This, though, is Jan Elache, who is still on the tail of Fred Verviche but equally not quite close enough to be able to challenge. So he's got the Audi in his sights, but with the 40 kilos of success weight aboard the Link and Co, he doesn't have the pace to be able to close on the Audi that looks to scamper away once again. Watch Ashkuna now. He's going to be really quick out of Mandarin, and then the move possibly at Lisboa will come once again. He's in the wheel tracks of the Audi. Look back from the Audi. That's Ashkuna behind. And maybe on this lap, Ashkuna is not quite as keen to try. He's not. Maybe he wasn't as close either. So Rob Huff covers off that line and covers off third place. But Ashkuna has a look at San Francisco. No way through there. Both of them totally committed to finishing third. But no further action about Fred Bavish about Good. the start of the race. So that comes up from race control. And I'm not sure if anyone was expecting that little cheeky look going into San Francisco. Not sure that that overtaking manoeuvre works uh, an awful lot, but uh, uh, Rob was able to uh, maybe relax for a moment. Yep, no challenge here going into this moment. And whoops, here he comes. He's doing it into San Francisco. No, just slotted in behind. So the element of surprise, I reckon, now for this battle for third place. I think that surprised everybody, but it was a bit <laughs> cheeky by Mikhail Ashkina. Didn't work, but you can see that he's utterly committed to getting this place away from Rob Huff. And this is how it looked from a different angle. So there was a gap, but I think Ashkina thought, no, discretion, better part of valour and all of that, and slotted in behind, uh, because to go off completely would be really bad news. That lead gap looking like it's come down just a little bit between Mikhail and Girolo. I mean, I'm not convinced that Nestor is going to get close enough to challenge with only a lap to run, but he has taken four tenths out of it. Yep, so the gap has come down to just over one second between first and second. Michelitz and uh, Gilles Army, they continue to be in first and second place with this battle heading around the Melko hairpin. 
down through Black Sands and the run down towards the fast part of the circuit now. What are we going to see in this battle for third place? With Rob Huff in third place, needs maximum points for this race to take things through to the final round for the Macau gear race here at Macau tomorrow. The scene is very well and truly set for the battle into Lisboa once again because Ashkona right there with Rob Huff once again. I think what Rob also tried to do on the mountain part of the circuit was stack Ashkuna back into teammate Fred Vavish, but Fred hasn't stayed with the Hyundai, so Rob's still having to do this on his own pretty much as they come out of Reservoir. So at that point, he has got 0.4 of a second onto the last lap's worth of an advantage. The lead gap is down to nine tenths. Ashkuna pulls out, so we've got a fight for the lead that's building, and definitely a fight for third. It's going to be a great last lap, this. Let's concentrate on third. First of all, it's Huff still ahead of Ashkuna as they come down towards Lisboa. Look at how the lead gap has closed as well. Ashkuna to the outside line. It's not worked before and it won't work this time. Huff's got the inside. Huff keeps third. He defends beautifully into Lisboa under pressure as well. He knew what was coming. It's the last chance to do that at Lisboa. It's the final lap and Rob Huff has defended beautifully from Mikel Ashkona doing exactly what he needed to do. Not sure how chuffed he's going to be about being in third place. Um, because he really wanted to be battling for second place and the lead of the race. But he's been defending throughout this race and doing exactly what was asked of him, defending beautifully. So Huff for third, fourth is Ashkena, fifth is Babish. But up front, nine tenths split Norbert Mikulish and Nestor Girolami starting the last lap. I don't think Nestor is close enough nor does he have enough of the race in terms of overtaking opportunities to challenge, but he certainly brought down that gap against Norbert Mikulish, who is going to go into the last race tomorrow, 10th uh, on the reverse grid, but with a really nice, healthy advantage in the championship. So they thread their way through the tight and twisty section of the gear circuit here at Macau, out of the right-hander at Moorish, and then on towards Donna Maria, the long left-hander, has Rob been able to get himself a little bit of date up between himself and Ashkona? Yes, he has. On the run now, downhill into Malco Hairpin. Single file for the final time in the sunshine and the shade here at Macau. Through the Malco Hairpin, is there going to be any kind of manoeuvre? No, there was a problem there for Ashkona going through the Malco Hairpin. Dropped back a little bit from Rob Huff. There was a bit of a wiggle, wasn't there? And no places lost, so Fred Babich not able to capitalise on that. But at last, Rob Huff can breathe. He can, and so can Norbert Mikulish, because he is going to go with an 18-point cushion into the championship showdown tomorrow. The only person that can stop him being the TCR World Tour champion is Rob Huff. But race one in the gear race is going to be won by Norbert Mikulish. He wins at Macau. Nestor Girolami second, Rob Huff third, fourth, Mikul Ashkana fifth, Fred Mavish and Jan Elache can't win the championship, but he fights back after a bad start to sixth place and the celebration then for the BRC Hyundai and Squadra Corsa, because that takes now Norbert Mikulish much closer to a championship. Slightly resigned expressions on the pit wall for the Comte Audi team, but Rob Huff is not out of the equation yet. And from 10th on the grid, of course, the reverse grid, that's where Norbert Mikulish will start tomorrow. It puts him in jeopardy. There are cars all around him. Yeah, so the celebrations for the team down in pit lane and just a single thumbs up in the cockpit of the car and keeping it cool, come on, because it's never over, never over until it's over and we have the Macau gear race to look forward to tomorrow, another nine lap race. We can say it now because we have a checkered flag and no interruptions during that race, superb. Yeah, well, I think we used the expression, didn't we? Uh, touring car drivers driving properly and all of that. Well, it was... Uh, Quality racing and you know, quality driving and respectful driving. Yeah, yeah. You know, that fight exactly between Ash Kuller and Huff might, might only have been for third place, but two stars doing it properly. Very, very impressive indeed. Clean, tidy, and we have a championship that goes into the final round of the year for the Kumo TCR World Tour event of Macau. Rob Huff. Looks like he's just been out for a little Sunday afternoon drive, doesn't he? Looks very cool, very calm. He'll be very hot and bothered when he gets out of the car, for sure. It's uh, a cockpit that uh, rises above 50 degrees in, uh, in the conditions of a hot day like we've got here at Macau today. But uh, these drivers keep themselves very, very fit indeed to be able to deal with that sort of defense out on track and the temperature as well. Super stuff by the top three. They'll be arriving down in Park Fairmate. They will be shepherded over to 
the podium in due course. Checker flag still waving as the rest of the field come through. Norbert Mikulish has already won this year at Portimao at Vallelonga and then had a, a win at Bathurst, uh, which set him up nicely coming here this weekend. So uh, another good result. It's been a really competitive year. There's been this uh, relatively small band that have done the entire tour, and obviously local drivers have supplemented that. But the concept of trying to keep alive a, a world championship has worked because next year it's going to get an FIA rubber stamp on it. So the uh, world tour has continued, and by having it in this fashion allowing local drivers to drop in and out to boost the entry and uh, on occasions surprises like with for example will brown being one of the real stars when they went to eastern creek or what's it called now sydney motorsports park taking a couple of wins uh, you know bringing people in same spec of car level playing field good racing local knowledge it's, it's it's really made an interesting year i don't suppose they really knew at the start of this year whether it was going to be a success or not no. and uh, it no. has been a success but that's the same as tcr anyway when tcr came in as a concept i don't think anyone really knew whether it was going to be uh, the huge success that it has been globally because there are such um, prestigious championships right the way around the world for tcr spec touring cars that means they're available in many parts yes. of the world as well. And you don't have to run them in TCR because, of course, they're eligible for the Creventic 24-hour series. There's a class for them in the NLS and the Nürburgring 24 hours. So you can get a lot of mileage out of one of those cars as uh, the winning entrants are sent to uh, the pit lane and the Park Fairmate area there and the others to the scrutineering bay. But Norbert Mikulich will be delighted, as I say, an 18-point advantage now going into tomorrow's race. That just gets him even closer to the championship. And we've had a similar situation for another Hyundai driver in the China Touring Car Championship. So this could be a really good party from the Hyundai teams at the end of the weekend. Yep. On Sunday, they had the awards presentation and uh, multiple parties take place as uh, that finishes with a huge firework display. Things to look forward to. The firework display takes place over the water. It is very spectacular, as you would expect here at Macau. And Norby arrives down in Park Fairmate, gets himself out of the car once he's sorted out the belts inside the car. And Norby Mikulic, once again, <laughs> is very happy at Macau. But, uh, the tempered celebrations in as much as there is still work to be done tomorrow for the title. The Kumo TCR World Tour. <laughs> Team are happy, that's for sure, and rightly so. And so too, Gilles Army arriving in Park Ferme and Rob Huff as well. So I think Rob will be disappointed not to have been able to do anything about Girolami, but the Audi just did not seem to have the outright pace, did it? And, and you made the point that it's been a bit like that all weekend. It's been, to use that dreadful phrase for a driver, there or thereabouts, but it's never looked to sparkling. But I just do keep thinking that partly the, the Audi RS3 is coming towards the end of its development life and it's just that bit harder to wring something out of it. That said, Nestor Girolami has worked wonders with the Honda Civic because that's a venerable old shape and uh, didn't do the second part of qualifying after a red flag yesterday with a problem but he's bounced back today in good style. And what a history that car has got the Honda in TCR racing and in World Touring Car racing as well. Very, very impressive that. And, uh, the victor, Norby Mikulic, enjoying the moment down in Park Fairmate. Taking a bit of water on board as well. Chance for the uh, drivers to catch up with each other. Should get the chance to hear from Norby down in the pit lane. And let's get down to Paul Jeffries with our winner. OK, I am here with our race winner, Norby Mikulic, just celebrating with teammate Mikkel Athkona. Norby! Another weekend, another iconic track race win. How did that one go? Tell me all about it. Yeah, it was a fantastic start. First of all, I was a bit uh, worried if my getaway will be good enough, but I managed to keep the lead and the car, like yesterday, uh, was just great. So it wasn't easy because I was pushing uh, flat out, but uh, thanks to the team because uh, today, amazing day, uh, amazing day uh, thanks to the car that I had. Things look good at the front of the field, but we never really saw a gap deform to uh, Bebo Girolame. Were you managing the pace, or is that everything that we've got at this moment? I was not uh, managing. <laughs> I was uh, 
going flat out, probably I used the tires a bit too much in the beginning to make a small gap. But then towards the end, he was much stronger than me. So anyway, I expected something like this to happen. Uh, my plan was to, to build a gap and then to, to wait and see. But fortunately, it was a, was a good strategy. And it's an excellent start to the racing weekend. We go again tomorrow. How confident are you feeling on the reverse grid? I don't know. Tomorrow is a new day. I mean, starting P10, uh, you are in the middle of the pack, so anything can happen. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Derby. And let's head back up to the commentary box. So good to hear from our race winner. And uh, they'll be heading over towards the podium in a couple of moments in the sunshine here at Macau. So quick are they to get the next uh, race ready. We've already got the grid boards in place, but confirmation of round 19 of 20 for the Kumo TCR World Tour event. Norbert Mikulic takes the win. Gilles Army in second place. Rob Huff in third place. Ashkona in fourth. Fred Vavish in fifth. Jan Erlache recovering after a poor start in sixth place. Martin Guar and Ted Bjork complete the top eight and a full rundown of the results of the penultimate rounds of the tour. Ahead of the podium presentation, they're getting ready over the far side of the circuit, the podium. Garlands of victory will be awarded to the drivers and the trophies. Rob Huff has a big trophy cabinet from Macau. He's probably got a Macau special trophy. Only third place today. We're about to have a view back at a race that was without stoppage and many highlights during the penultimate round of the World Tour for TCR. So spectacular touring car racing, spectacular GT racing will be next at Macau. But uh, before all of that, Mikhail Ashkema uh, reflecting on his fourth place. The winning drivers have gone up to the podium. Gariele Tarquini discussing the race with uh, Ashkema. The main focus of that for him, a big, big battle that he has with Rob Huff. But Rob coming out on top. So the uh, officials get ready for the penultimate race of today. The championship then, 18 points between Norbert Mikulic and Rob Huff going into tomorrow. So it certainly is going to be tough for Rob, but he will start ahead on the grid. And if he can make good progress over the first few corners and Norbert Mikulic get a bit stuck in the traffic, then suddenly the pendulum swings back in his direction. So it's not over until it's over. And uh, not only is the gear race a prestigious thing to win at Macau, so of course is the first uh, Kumho TCR World Tour. Uh, so there's that to factor into the mix tomorrow as well. A number of the drivers that you see within the championship have dipped in and out, done local races like Will Brown and Tony D'Alberto. Uh, Tom Coronel, who's won TCR Europe, sadly not here this weekend. He did enter, but then uh, elected not to race. But uh, we had a, a good mix of drivers. Kobe Powell's also the Belgian driver, has also looked uh, very impressive on his visits to the series in Europe during the course of 2023 as well. So from the technical area up to the podium, the drivers are taken and then to the podium. And there will be two podiums for this, one, if you like, for the gear race and then one for TCR World Tour. But uh, Norbert Mikulic to take the race win, to take the top step. The teams have all assembled at the bottom of the podium. In the background with the Audi cap on, Chris Reinke, the uh, head of Audi Sport Customer Racing, 
who's been looking after the teams for many a long year now, both in GT and touring cars. And uh, Audi Sport as a brand has had a huge amount of success as well. So the doors to the podium. Ladies and open. gentlemen, We're welcome to, to the 70th Macau Grand Prix. Now it's the Macau Gear Race Kumho TCR World Tour event of Macau Race One Trophy Presentation Ceremony. We will be presenting two sets of trophy at this ceremony. They are the trophies for Macau Gear Race and the trophies for 2023 TCR World Tour in Macau Race One. First of all, let's welcome our top three finishers to the podium. On the second runner-up, number 179, Rup Hof from the UK. Attention in the paddock, Macau GT Cup and FIA GT World Cup cars. Paddock gate and pit exit are now open. Paddock gate and pit exit are now open. Welcome, Hoof. And the first run-up is number one, two, nine, Nestor Jolami. Congratulations. And our winner driver is number 105, Norbert Michelis. Congratulations to the top three winners. Now it's time for the national anthem for the Thank you. And now may I invite the following guests to present the laurel and the trophy for Macau Gear Race to our winners. First of all, let's welcome Mr. Buddy Lam, Executive Vice President, Corporate Office of Galaxy Entertainment Group, to present the laurel and the trophy for Macau Gear Race. First to our second runner-up, Rob Hoof. Congratulations. And I would like to also invite Mr. Lam to present the laurel and the trophy for Macau Gear Race to our first runner-up, Nestor Jurolami. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Lam. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Poon Wang Kun, President of the Sports Bureau and Coordinator of the Macau Grand Prix Organizing Committee, to present the laurel and trophy for Macau Gear Race to the winner driver, Norbert Mitchell. Congratulations, and I would like to invite the guests together at the center and take a photo together. Drivers can reach to the top of the podium as well. Thank you, thank you, Gats. And I would like to invite the drivers, please remain on the podium. And now I would like to invite the winning team, Team B BRC, the representative, Gianluca Diana. And Mr. Paul Van Kuhn, President of the Sports Bureau and Coordinator of the Macau Grand Prix Organizing Committee, will be presenting the trophy for 2023 GCR World in Macau Race 1. Also to the winning team, once again, BRC. Congratulations. Will all the guests please gather at the center and take a photo together? Thank you.
please look to the front and take a photo together. Congratulations once again to the top three winners of Macau Gear Race Kum Ho TCR World Tour event of Macau Race 1. Thank you, guys. And again, driver, please remain at the podium as it's the champagne shower time. And we will be sharing your glory moments or the audience. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, practically switching over there, uh, that's what I like. 